I'm here, welcome to 23. You're joining me for Wishful Thinking Chapter 11. It's not what you think! An hour later, you sit in your father's hospital room, wringing your hands in front of the doctor. Don't worry about sugarcoating it, okay? Just tell me straight. What are we looking at, Air? Well, your father is very lucky you're, for your fast acting and calling 911, Miss Lambert. I'm not sugarcoating when I say that. But every stroke and individual recovery are different. Your father is in a coma right now, and we can't be sure for how long. The words wash over you, and you nod numbly. Could you actually sugarcoat it just a little, then? He's stabilized, so that's some good news. He could wake up at any time. I have to ask, was this my fault? We were having an argument uh, when he collapsed. Not at all. Isemic strokes are caused by clogged arteries. The fight was just a coincidence. Then why do I feel so terrible? A sense of irrational guilt is completely normal. You just endured a traumatic event. I promise you that this was not your fault. Thank you, Doctor. So, we already got recovery. How serious is this? I'm not going to lie to you, Miss Lambert. The majority of stroke survivors do have lifelong impairments. But he's stable, and I have no reason to believe he won't wake soon. Even if he may walk with a cane from now on, he's still with us. Of course, you're right. I, I'd just like to get him to the point as soon as possible. The best thing you can do is be here for him. Recovery from a stroke can take a few months or a few years. What? There's no way we can afford the extent or that extent of treatment. The hospital is more than happy to work with you on a payment plan. We'll try our best to make installments reasonable. I'm just gonna end up working myself to the bone and deep and in debt for the rest of my natural life. I guess the only thing I left is to go to work then. Doctor's eyes linger on you thoughtfully. I'm not entirely sure you should be driving right now, Miss Lambert. You're welcome to stay and collect yourself when you're ready. I think it would be wise to have a friend pick you up. Sure, I'll call my boss and just let him know why I'm not there. Knowing him, he won't care at all. He'll just be... he's gonna be pissed that I missed the rescheduled interview. Call the studio, let everyone know you're at the hospital, then hang up and stare off into space. You're not sure for how long. Oh, Dad, I'm so sorry this happened to you. I'll do everything in my power to make sure you get better, no matter what it takes. The door suddenly opens, and Charlie Carmichael steps into the room. What, what are you doing here? I came to offer my condolences, Amanda. I'd like to help you in any way that I can. I don't know what you told them to get Clarence to come back here, but I don't want visitors right now. I think you're going to want to hear what I have to say. Doctor, I told you. Charlie, this isn't the time. If you won't listen to me, I'll have you removed. I just came up from the billing department. Excuse me? I gave them my checking account information and told them to cover your father's treatment indefinitely on my tab. Why would you do something like that? It's gonna be tens of thousands of dollars easy. Consider me a generous benefactor, a friend, someone you can trust, someone you would never betray. A bribe against my integrity. Please don't ask me to do this. Being an honest reporter is the most important thing in the world to me. I, I can't. More important than your father. Getting the best care he possibly can, really? The do door to the hospital room pops open. The doctor glances in. Is everything alright? I heard you call for me. I look at Charlie, then back to the doctor. Everything is fine, thank you for checking. A nurse joins the doctor at the door. You wanted to be informed if we got some check-ins from the Oak Hills area, right? That's correct. We just got another two. Same symptoms. Same symptoms. I'll be right there. Excuse me, Miss Lambert. Close the door again. 
No kills. Didn't Ellen's segment on sick livestock happen there? So, do we have a deal? Cast a forlorn look at your father, so weak on the hospital bed. Think of the mountain of bills in your name. Deal. Excellent. Best invoke to your father, man. I'll see you at the interview. We are rescheduled for later this week. You're happy because you know you have me trapped. You knew I'd say yes, but I had no choice. After Charlie leaves, you put your head in your hands and try to soothe yourself. A moment later, the door opens again. What now? Oh, my mistake. It's not a good time. Aubrey. You rush forward and throw your arms around his neck, hugging him tightly. Aubrey sighs and rubs a hand over your back. Hey, Amanda. I'm so sorry to hear about your dad. I came as soon as I could. Pull away and sniffle, composing yourself. Yeah, I'm trying to keep my head up. The doctor said that his recovery could be full, even rapid, so I'm trying to focus on that. I'm glad to have someone like you in my life, Amanda. The way you push forward with your head held high, it's nothing short of amazing. Thanks, Aubrey. One thing the doctor says I can't do, though, is drive right now. Would you be able to give me a ride home? Of course, I'll give you a ride. Come on. Heading back to the city, you notice a familiar ice cream shop coming up on the right. Oh man, Hanson's Creamery. My dad used to take me there whenever I was sad or scared. Which was often. I was a sensitive kid. Uh, you let yourself feel, Amanda. One of the many things I really like about you. How about a giant Sunday from Hanson's? We can just relax and talk, and my shoulder is uh, perfectly good for leaning up. That's really sweet of you, but I promise I'm gonna be fine. You don't have to. For my peace of mind, then, I don't wanna just drop you off at home. Let me be here for you in your time of need. Let Aubrey show you that he cares by sharing some ice cream together and learn more about each other. That would be too much right now. I appreciate the thought, but I'm still too raw. I don't really want to think about my dad right now. Yeah, that makes sense. Aubrey reaches out and pats her knee sympathetically. You'll get through this, Amanda. I know you will. Thanks, Aubrey. I hope you're right. We return to work. You're determined to focus on your interview with Carmichael. You don't see him in the studio for your rescheduled interview, but Anna's here. She locks eyes with you from across the room and silent smiles sadly. Anna approaches, giving you a quick, gentle hug and rubbing your arm. Amanda, I just want to say that I heard what happened, and I'm really sorry about your dad. Let me know if there's anything you need, okay? You don't have to do the interview today if you don't want to. I can talk to Charlie. That's okay, Anna. Thank you. Anyway, I honestly just want to get to work and try to forget about this whole thing for a little while. I understand. I'm on my way out for a minute, but uh, I'll see you at the interview. Good luck. As Anna leaves, Aubrey arrives with your leads in hand. I have something here that might actually cheer you up. Ready for it? I'm dying to hear it got a big story story on your plate today. Charlie Carmichael's in the middle of a firestorm. What really? Oh yeah, eco-activist group Expunge took credit for his campaign office vandalism and they say that they have internal documents in their possession. What kind of internal documents? Carmichael drafted up some policies that wouldn't go public until after he was elected. He'd be more lenient on environmental violations and reduce fines. That's great. Hmm. <laughs> He's paying Dad's medical bills for unwavering public support. Ahem. He caught the criminals responsible for ruining his headquarters. What a win for Charlie. Seriously, you don't think there's a story in the expunge claim? The hall doors push open and Charlie Carmichael strolls onto the set with Anna and to... Amanda, my star. Great to see you. You can't wait to try out the exclusive one more time. Excuse me, Aubrey. I better go prep my questions. Amanda, wait. You pretend not to hear him hurrying off before you have to answer any more questions. 
Oh, it's later you settle in front of the cameras for your interview. Good day, Northbridge. I'm Amanda Lambert with Charlie Carmichael in a special Northbridge News exclusive segment. Good to have you again, Mr. Carmichael. Ah, it's always a pleasure. Force yourself to ask the questions you've prepared while Alaga and Tony watch behind the cameras. Tell me, Mr. Carmichael. Will you be pressing charges on the criminals? That's an interesting question. The court is such nasty business. I'd rather settle the matter privately. However, I have no choice. These troublemakers need to see you and that I can't just be messed with. I'll fight back. Naturally, they did break the law. They must have anticipated there would be consequences. I still haven't made up my mind. The members are anonymous, but in my experience, nothing is truly anonymous. Good point. If you fight hard enough, you can find what you're looking for. The rest of the interview passes in a blur as you agree with everything Carmichael says. I'd rather focus on my bright future of campaign than linger on the troubled kids who pulled this stunt, though. With the help of true journalists like you, I should be able to put this fake news hullabaloo behind me in no time at all. Thanks so much for sitting with me, Charlie. As always, your arguments are uh, certainly persuasive. Uncut, that's a wrap. Loved it! My star reporter is back! What a great interview, Amanda. Thanks again for always being so very, very understanding towards my plight. Give up. Yes, sir, not a problem. All right, all right. Northbridge is going to fall in love all over again with these two heartbreakers. Now, can I steal our future governor for just a minute? Be my guest. Charlie and Alec head off, chatting amiably, you catch Anna's eye. She did a complete 180. What changed? Is it because she's under too much stress after her dad's stroke? Maybe Charlie won her trust back by going to visit him at the hospital. At least it wasn't a fishy donation this time. But what if it was? He rushed off as soon as he heard. He seemed almost happy about it. Anna, I want to apologize. I know how that must have looked. You don't have to apologize to me. I think I know what's going on. She leans close to you, lowering her voice as Tony packs up his gear and heads off. Did he give you money? I know that's usually how he handles problems. Wow, you do have a nose for news, Anna. That pig. Of course he goes after you when you're most vulnerable. I, I promise to portray him in a positive light for the rest of his campaign. I can't afford the bills, otherwise I feel terrible, but... Don't. I would have done the same thing. Anyone would have. He knew that. So I guess that means I'm in in the investigation alone now, huh? I'm not abandoning you. I still care about the truth, even if I can't report it. We just have to... Wait until my dad is out of the hospital. Find another ally, ally who can. You're stuck undercover as long as you work for him, and I'm bound by our agreement to do nothing with my story. We need to make a connection with someone who doesn't have as much to lose, but still hates Charlie just as much. Ellen, maybe? Northbridge loves Charlie, though, except... Environmental advocates. I was thinking the same thing. He just got his fair share of enemies. We just have to find them. Alec and Charlie enter the room again, laughing about something. I sway, sweep past you, their thoughts suddenly filtering in your head. Good idea to head away from prying eyes. Amanda seems to have fallen in line, but you can never be too sure. Be back in a minute, Anna. We don't need any tag-alongs where we are going. Lean close and whisper to Anna as they stride towards the doors. Anna, I think they're up to something. I just have a really strong reporter hunch right now. What should we do? Should we follow them? As much as I love your company, I think uh, effectively tailing is way harder with two people. But I might be able to bring something back for you. Track Charlie and Alec to get hard evidence from later in the story. Or reporter point and show Anna, you're not giving up. Play it safe, actually. Follow them and get some dirt.
drink. Um, plate safe. There's still too much at risk for me while my dad's in the hospital. We need Charlie's help until he's better. I wish you were still willing to fight alongside me, but I understand. I have no idea how hard it must be. It's a lot to handle, but thanks for understanding. You talk for a moment longer before saying your goodbyes, then head back to work. Later, prepping for your next segment, there's a knock at your door. Dressing room door. The fuzzy thoughts emanate through the wall. I can't believe we're so disappointed. Come in. The door pops open and Aubrey steps inside. Hey, I was just down in editing and saw your exclusive with Carmichael. Oh, right, that. Yeah, that, what happened? I gave you a real story and you handed it to Carmichael on a skewer. Aubrey, I wish I could tell you. I just can't. Amanda, if you're in some kind of trouble, you have to tell me. It's complicated. I've said too much already. But the people at the studio questioned your integrity and I stood up for you. Don't you know how this is going to look? Go ahead and tell me. It'll look like you're Carmichael's patsy. And like I'm yours. Of your temples as a dull headache suddenly grows. Aubrey, I'm sorry. And she didn't even... I just... Why won't she? Your thoughts flare and dim like a fading radio station and you frown. You're still trying to figure it out when your headache goes away as quickly as it came. I don't even know how to feel about you right now. I have so much going on in my head. I feel like I'm going crazy. Really? I can't hear anything. I just... I wish there was something you could say to make me feel better. I wish there was too. I... I don't know what to say. from the heart. Okay, Aubrey. I understand that I've broken your trust and it must feel terrible. I'll find some way to show you that I'm still the same old Amanda. It'll just take time while I figure out some things. You know where to find me. I'll, I'll be waiting. For now, I gotta go clear my head. I'll see you around. Aubrey. As the door closes behind him, your heart thunders and your chest in the room suddenly feels very small. This has to be a mistake. Maybe it's just Aubrey. Maybe being upset screened his thoughts. Rush to the studio, telling yourself again and again that this isn't happening. You burst through the doors and spot Tony packing up his equipment. He fumbles with the lens, drops it, and accidentally crushes it beneath the scale. No thoughts. You get sight of June and Maggie flirting with each other at the writer's desks. Aha! Uh -huh. June is always a bubbling holder in the box, but she's around Maggie. Guaranteed win. I was gonna send you a selfie before I went to bed, but I kinda dropped the phone in the bathtub. The bathtub? It was gonna be tastefully blurry, but now my phone is a blurry one. Twist the ending. Shock myself. And closer. Several steps, but you still can't hear anything at all. You step close enough to almost touch June. Whoa, wait, Creeper. What's going on? You can't hear thoughts anymore. I'm just losing complete control of my life. Excuse me. Unsure of where to go and what to do now, you leave the studio perplexed by the silence in your head. Rot row. That night, you head to your dad's place to pack up some things for when he wakes up. Okay, fresh socks, some deodorant, the, the book he was just reading. You lower your head and press your lips together as tears fill your eyes. There's a soft knock at the front door and you look up to see Jamie tentatively crossing the threshold. Hey there. I saw your car out front. Uh, Figured I'd come over and just make sure, are you, are you okay? Walk to Jamie and throw your arms around his neck, letting yourself really sob for the first time today. Of course you're not okay, that's 
was a really stupid question. I know I should have told you sooner. Not in a, a text. I've been trying to keep it all at bay and I didn't know how to put it in. Shh, 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 shh. It's okay. You don't have to explain yourself to me. Jamie. What if it doesn't wake up? Let's not talk about that until the doctor says that we should. I just know that life is going to be different after this, and I'm not ready. I think you'll surprise yourself, Amanda. You are the most capable woman I know. I have to be now, don't I? I have to handle all of this. Not alone. It's a lot for, for one person to take. Don't forget that you have a support system right here. Thank you, Jamie. I won't forget. Even though seeing you be so sweet, good, and pure only makes me feel worse. He's gonna be okay. And so will you. Hope you're right. I mean, I know you're right. I just can't stop thinking about all the things that are going wrong in my life, swirling around in my head all day. There's a light to guide you out through those dark thoughts. You just have to find it. What about your dazzling wit, your kind heart, your razor-sharp fashion sense? Yes, I've got... A killer bond. <laughs> I don't know, we haven't seen it. Uh, my own place and a job. You, huh? Hmm. People keep asking me who's your love interest. I'm like, I don't know. I guess I've got you, huh? From the cradle to the grave, girl. Jamie slings his arm around your shoulders and beams down at you. You promise? <laughs> Can't believe you'd even ask Dumbo, of course. Good. That's all I needed to hear. Oh, and how could I forget Banner and Jinx? Their interplay is so entertaining, I don't even get on the internet anymore. All I hear is Amanda is a great pet mom. Have I ever told you that your honesty is your best quality? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Let's nurture all these little rays of sunshine that guide you through the dark. Hey, that gives me an idea. Is your old bedroom still a cluttered time capsule? And naturally, why? Well, uh, would it be cool if I wanted to dig around in there with you? I bet there's a ton of little pieces of fam and friendship to make us smile. Let Jamie cheer you up by going through some old things and reliving the happy memories they hold. Maybe another time. I know your heart's in the right place, but I don't think I can handle all the memories right now. It's too fresh. Of course. I understand. It was just an idea. There's got to be other ways to help you feel better. Hey, I almost forgot about your big exclusive with Carmichael. Can't wait to see this. I bet you tear into him good. And ought to bring a smile to your face, huh? Even a little? Oh, no. We don't have to watch that. We should get the stuff that... Amy turns on the news just in time to see the worst part. I agree. Softening dramatic penalties on corporate waste production will ultimately benefit our economy. What are you doing? Amanda, you sound like a robot. What happened? I was just doing my job. As a capitalist puppet? You don't even look the same. You look like you're being held hostage. That's what work is. You're holding yourself hostage for ransom. You get every two weeks. So you were forced to read from a script or they were going to fire you? Is that what happened? No, that was all me. Maybe you just don't know me as well as you thought you did. I don't believe that for a second. That's because you always make excuses for me. I'm just a bad person, Jamie. Amanda, seriously, stop. Tell me what's really going on. No, okay? It's too much, and I can't get involved. Anyone else involved? You could get hurt. If I could get hurt, that means you could get hurt. I won't. I've got everything under control. Why won't you let me in? We've always tackled our problems together. Not this time, Jamie. I'm going into this one alone. Jamie stares at you with an intensity and says nothing, even though you feel as if he's trying to speak to you. 
Jamie, I can't hear what you're thinking. Maybe that's for the best. I should get out of here before one of us says something we really regret. Too late. Watch him go with helpless eyes, still groping for the words. Could make this all okay again. After a rough night of tossing and turning, you force yourself to get dressed and shuffle in the living room. It's okay, life. It's gotta do. It's gotta do life. Here we go. Being alive. A loud knock pounds at your door. Only another dear friend I've disappointed, or some goon of Carmichael's here with more demands. Nope, it's probably Ellen. You open the door and gape. Finally, some service. Can we talk? You mean, like, together? Good point, honey. I'll do the talking and you do the listening. You're gonna want to hear this. Hmm. I felt super short, didn't I? I really did. Kind of just felt meh. So without further ado, thank you all for watching. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Head down the description below. Links to social media, Discord, and a few links to support me and my content. And without further ado, thanks for tuning in, and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace out.